go yes. uh, go live now. Yes. So Darren's just ducked out to get some communion elements, yep. and he's back again. So. Okay. Um, there we go. Uh, just just to let you know, we, we only made contact with Darren just only about two or three days ago and already we can see this is another God connection and we, we haven't sort of said anything and we probably won't at the moment, but we're, there's something really big coming down the pipeline um, <laughs> <laughs> that we're very, very excited about. It's um, just a trickle at the moment, but let yeah. me tell you, it's a very, very big part. And I'll tell you what, <laughs> you guys might all be part of it so just watch this space because yeah. uh darren definitely has um some exciting stuff happening mm. where he is mm. so mm. that's great okay we are live stream and i'm going to introduce uh, gloria and myself uh to the people in the third dimension i'm gary and this is my wife gloria hi and we are grace faith christian discipleship and this is the gfcd uk 3d Bible study, that's a mouthful, isn't it? What makes it perfect <laughs> is you guys are out there watching the live stream. That's right. And you know the drill. Go down into that corner mm -hmm. and tap on the, um, what's it called? Subscribe button and, and the, the little bell. And that's on YouTube. And if you're watching us on our ministry page, then click on the follow us button. Mm, yeah. Now I'm going to ask everybody on screen to introduce themselves to the people in the third dimension. And we're going to throw you in the deep end, Darren, and ask you to start. Just tell us where you are and just a little bit about you. So everyone Hi, Wendy. Get to know you. Hi, Wendy. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Yeah, Darren. Uh, my, name, my name is Darren Samuel. I'm in Colorado Springs, Colorado. And um, I believe was introduced to to uh, Gary and Gloria through a divine connection. Uh, just found them and and uh, started talking, and immediately the Holy Spirit started working and uh, revealing things on both ends. And so I'm just glad to be a part of it today. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being Thanks. here. Thanks, yeah. Darren. Wendy, would you like to introduce you and Tom? And um, I'm Wendy, and. Um, my husband Tom and we're from England in a place called Grimsby. Thanks Wendy. Welcome. And uh, Craddock, could you introduce yourself please? Yeah, hi, I'm Craddock Roberts and I live in North Wales near a little place called Conway. Thanks hi. Craddock. Hi. And Heather? Hi everyone, I'm Heather and I live in um, Bunbury, Western Australia. Hi Heather, Thanks, lovely Heather. to have you with us. <laughs> and Nikitas, could you introduce yourself, please? Hello, everyone. I am Limnios Nikitas. I live in uh, Belgium, Europe, Belgium. Wow. I'm Greek. From my parents are Greek, but I I was born in Belgium. Yeah. Awesome. Nice, nice to meet you all. Yes. And you work in the Netherlands. <laughs> yeah. I work in the Netherlands. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's true. You get around, you get around, my friend. Okay. Yeah. As you can see in this Bible study, there's a lot of fellowship and a lot of fun. It's um, yeah, sure. It's it's um, the joy of the Lord. Yes. You know. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm just going to quickly open in prayer, and then I'll uh, get you to join us for our communion. If you are out there in 3D land and you would like to join us for communion, just jump up and grab yourself some elements, bread, cracker, juice, whatever you want, and please join us um, and fellowship with us for communion. <laughs> Father God, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much that you have drawn your children from across this globe to uh, fellowship with one another, to reach out and to to uh, speak your word into the lives of people uh, who are watching on either now or in the future. And Lord, we just so thank you for all of these uh, uh, ministers who are who are just such a blessing to uh to this ministry and to all these people. We thank you for your precious word. We thank mm. you for your Holy Spirit. We thank you that our eyes are open to hear and our ears are open to, to hear and our hearts are good soil to receive what you have for us mm. today. In mm. Jesus' name, amen. 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 So um, today what I was doing was uh, I, I, I was listening to... Um, uh, my little Bible app called Dwell, and I had uh, 
I set myself a challenge of listening through the whole Bible in in 90 days. And uh, so today I was listening to Leviticus. How exciting. (laughs) 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 So I was doing other things at the same time. It wasn't like I was doing a, um, you know, an in-depth study of Leviticus. I just want to listen to uh, it all. And it occurred to me, that I am so grateful that I'm li- living today and mm. not back then. Mm. Um, it's just like, oh my goodness, I would have hated to have done the washing. It was just, you know, oh. um, it would have been such a mess. But what really jumped out at me, and I had to go back because, you know, um, there was a bit that I read that I wanted to sort of look into a little bit more. And I'm going to go to um, uh, Leviticus 16. And I'm going to read from uh, verse 8 to verse 10. And then I'm going to jump over and read verse 15. uh, Yeah, verse 15. Yeah. So it says, And Aaron shall cast lots for the two goats, one lot for the Lord and the other lot for the scapegoat. And Aaron shall bring the goat on which the Lord's lot fell and offer it as a sin offering. But the goat on which the lot fell to the scapegoat shall be be presented alive before the Lord to make atonement upon it and to let it go as the scapegoat into the wilderness. And then over a little bit further... Um, oh, sorry, I'll jump down to verse 20. I'm oh, sorry, and sorry, up in verse 15. Then he shall kill the goat of the sin offering, which is for the people, bring its blood inside the veil, do with that blood as he did with the blood of the bull, and sprinkle it on the mercy seat and before the mercy seat. And then I'm jumping down to verse 20. And when he has made an end of the atoning for the holy place, the tabernacle of meeting and the altar, he shall bring the live goat. Aaron shall lay both his hands on the head of the live goat, confess over it all the iniquities of the children of Israel and all their transgressions concerning all their sins, putting them on the head of the goat and shall send it away into the wilderness by the hand of a suitable man. The goat shall bear on itself all their iniquities in an uninhabited land, and he shall release the goat in the wilderness. And I thought, wow, wow. Like, it just, like, went off inside of me. I haven't spent a lot of time in Leviticus, as you can probably uh, gather, But this just really went off inside of me. And you know what? Jesus can be found in every book of the Bible. Wendell taught that, didn't he? Mm. You know, Wendell Parr, he's Mm. what a great Karis teacher he is. My favourite. My favourite too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Jesus is in every book of the Bible. And the notes that I just wrote down, there there were two goats, right? There were two goats. The first goat was to be killed with bloodshed as a sacrificial offering to God for their sins. Jesus is the propitiation for our sins. The Mm -hmm. second goat removed sin, uh, sorry, the goat removed the sin and took it into the wilderness, never to be seen again. Jesus took sin away forever as far as the east is from the west that sin was removed and for those who call on jesus as their lord then this is what has been done for you the price of sin has been paid and the sin has been wiped away forever jesus was our scapegoat By his stripes we were healed when he was whipped at the whipping post. By his stripes we were healed. 
done, tick, finished. And by the shedding of his blood, the sin of all man for all time was forgiven, done, it is finished. Amen. Wow. Amen. Mm. Wow. Good news. Good news. Oh, good, <laughs> good news. news. Good news. Good news. And as we come together, as we come and partake of communion together, we remember Jesus. Thank you. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That was the true sacrifice, the true one that took away the sin of the world forever that took all our sicknesses and diseases upon himself. So we can rightly stand and say, by his stripes, we mm. were here. Yes. We yeah. are not the sick trying to get well. We are the healed oh. and whole defending yes. what we have in Jesus' name. Mm. And as we Amen. take communion together, mm. as we <coughs> take this bread, we <coughs> declare that by his stripes we are healed mm. and we declare that by mm. his blood we are forgiven. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank, thank, you, Jesus. thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. You're so good, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for your precious gift. Thank you, mighty Lord. We praise you and worship you. We lift you. We glorify you for your name is above all names. For you are holy and worthy and righteous. And we thank you, Jesus. We praise you and worship you, Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Yeah. Wow. Thank you, Gloria. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Gloria, Gloria and I were talking today and she made a statement and I can see it came out in that um, communion that we just took, that we are not the sick trying to get well. Mm. Because Jesus said, by his stripes, you were healed. Mm. That means yeah. we are the healed and we're defending our position, fighting off an attack from the enemy. And that's really important how you word your prayers. You know, um, I, I can remember myself in the old days praying to God and asking God to send me healing. Well, that's a prayer of doubt and unbelief because I was already healed. You know, the Bible, the, the Bible is a progressive revelation. It's not that God's progressive, it's that we're progressive. And that's what we're here for in this Bible study. We're going to learn how to rightly divide the word of truth for ourselves. So you guys out there in the third dimension, you've got the ability there to put comments down, not just little thumbs up. Um, just ask questions and, and agree with things. Or if you, if, you, if you disagree with things, put the comment in there and we will read all of your comments and we'll come back to you with, with a reply. Mm. So we're going over to the book of Romans chapter five and we're in, just three? starting at verse one. Okay. Yes, please. You haven't got it on there. No, I haven't got it on there. Okay, don't, don't share screen. Mm -hmm. let, me, let me deal with it. <clears throat> Sorry folks, just a technical issue. Clara and I were running a little bit behind time tonight. Yeah, um, the reason we were running a little bit behind time was we were getting an email out to somebody that a really important email, Darren, you'll know what that email's about. Um, so it's already gone out to Nicole. Praise God. Amen, yep. Amen. Yep, okay, so we're going to Romans. Just bear with so, me, folks. That's the Old you Testament. Normally, normally have all this set up. Yeah, right. Verse 5. Yep. Verse 5 or verse 1? Oh, sorry, chapter 5, verse 1. Okay. Okay, here we go. We'll and go we'll share, share screen. screen. That's it. Okay, we're up and away. Good. You know, yeah, I'll let that? you take over now. Okay, there we go. All so, right. if you can just read verse 1. Okay. Therefore, Having been justified by faith, we have peace with God 
through our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. So, Gloria, there's a fair bit of reading here. Gloria reads better than me, so I'm going to hand it over to Gloria to read. Right. So just pull me up when you want. Okay. No, well, these are my notes. Gloria's going to read my notes from Romans uh, chapter 5, take, verse 1. Take note in chapter 5 how anyone, that's Jew or Gentile, is justified. Prior to the cross, salvation was attainable through believing on the coming Messiah, but not after the cross. Can you pull up there? Mm -hmm. um, so prior to the cross, salvation was attainable through believing on the coming Messiah. All right? Amen. A lot of people haven't, haven't quite grasped that um, because the focus is on the age of grace. They couldn't go to heaven, right? When they died, they went to a place called paradise, which is apparently in the center of the earth. And if you read the account in the book of Luke about um, Lazarus and the rich man, I find that a really, a really interesting account because it tells, it's one of the very few stories that talk about um, what it's like on the other side of death, physical death I'm talking about. And apparently from my reading of it, we've got five, the, you have five senses. You can feel heat, you can thirst, you can all of that sort of stuff. So it's a really interesting account. Now, a lot of people mistakenly think that it's a parable. It is not a parable. And it starts with the words certain. There was a certain man, I think it says, mm -hmm. without quoting the whole thing off, but um, it makes a really interesting read. That's the story of um, uh, what's the first name? Rich Man and Lazarus. The Rich Man and Lazarus, mm -hmm. that's right. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, keep reading, Gloria. Now, after the cross, they, that's the Jew and Gentile, both have to believe on the risen Jesus. Since the you get, cross. Do you get that? Before the cross, the Jews could believe on the coming Messiah. And then if they died, they went to paradise. But after the cross, well, obviously the Messiah had come. So after the cross, the Jews and Gentiles all had to believe on the finished work of the cross. In other words, had to believe on Jesus. Okay, next. Mm -hmm. Since the cross, they have to hear the gospel. They then make the choice to receive Jesus by faith to be saved. Mm. We in the age of grace are all justified by one thing only, believing on Jesus, which is a decision. Yeah, it, because when you, you know, we are justified by his blood, but it's, there's, we have a, a role to play and that is to step out in faith and believe on Jesus. Okay. Mm -hmm. So Ephesians 2 8 says, for by grace ye are saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God. Is the gift of God both the grace part and the faith part? Hang or on. is it only on. is the gift of God in Ephesians, where mm -hmm. is it? Ephesians 2 8. 2 8. Is the gift of God both the grace part and the faith part? I'm asking a question here, right? Is the gift of you, you, you probably only think of one half of the equation. Both half? Both parts? Are they both of God? Well, it depends. Keep reading, Glory. Okay. Well, it depends on which translation of the Bible we read. The King James Version says faith of Christ, while other ver versions say faith in Christ. Whichever it is, we have a role, and that is to decide. To make a decision. Mm. You're right. So if it is the faith of Christ, then both the grace and the faith part in your salvation are from God. 
but we still are the ones that make the decision. You know, uh, Darren's an evangelist and Amen. he offers people the opportunity to accept Jesus as their Lord and Saviour. But God doesn't make the decision, neither does Darren. It's the person who hears the gospel that gets to make the decision. Yeah. Now, once they have made the decision, um, then the whole ball game changes, if you know what I mean, because mm -hmm. at that stage, um, they receive the faith of Christ. You know, we are all given um, the measure of faith, not a measure of faith. Mm -hmm. It's the same faith that raised Christ from the dead. So, you know, after that, after the new birth, when you're talking about faith, but the Christian walk is not about pumping yourself up in faith. The Christian walk is all about making a decision. Every step of that walk is a decision to come into agreement with what the word of God says. And when you do that, you empower that faith of Christ that's on the inside of you. Okay, yeah, that, that might be a, a big download for someone to get their handle on in just one sitting. But if you're liking what you're hearing, then plug in. This is, this is a discipleship a Bible study. The name is Grace, Faith, Christian Discipleship. The name of this ministry tells you what we do. Discipleship, discipleship. I believe that God is placing the church back in the hands of his people and his focus god's focus in this at this time is on discipleship that is his big focus right now it's not only our ministry it's all over the world it's yeah. global there's disciples being made everywhere okay so hebrews 4 2 for indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as to them but the word which they heard did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. Did you hear that? The gospel was preached to us as well as to them. So it's the same gospel. But it did mm. not profit them, not being mixed with faith in those mm. who heard it. So it's not just a matter of hearing the gospel. You have to mix it with faith. And we've got John joining us. Yep. Admit. Okay. And is that the end yep. of my notes? Okay. Well, can we go over for comments, please? Welcome, John. We'll just wait for John. Good morning. Oh. Good morning. John, would you like to just introduce yourself to everyone, please? Okay, sure. I'm uh, John Tripp. <clears throat> I live in High Point, North Carolina, which is. Uh, in the southeastern part of the uh, United States. And uh, thank you very much, Gary. You're welcome, You're welcome John. Uh, and we've got another American on the screen there with you, Darren. He's one of your countrymen. Okay, thank you. That's great. Okay. So Good to meet you. Uh, Darren, would you like to- <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry I'm late, there? but you know how it is. Oh, Better late than never. <laughs> That's fine, John. Would you like to come in with a comment, Darren? Yeah, you know, I'm just uh, so grateful, um, you know, that we have the opportunity to believe on Jesus and have a direct connection to God through Jesus. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was interesting at the beginning, you were talking about the uh, atonement for sin that happened once a year in the Holy of Holies by the mm -hmm. high priest. And that was an atonement for all the people once a year. And well, I was just talking with someone else last night about how uh, that place was so holy, they actually had to put a rope around um, the uh, the feet of the priest just in case something happened, they could pull them out because no one else could go in there. The power of God would strike them down. Mm -hmm. And um, so because Jesus was our sacrifice on the cross now, we have that personal connection. And I just always like to remind myself that when uh, he said it is finished and uh, gave up the ghost, that veil in the Holy of Holies was ripped right down the center. And that was God's uh, signal and reminder, reminder to us that the old covenant has passed and that the new covenant has entered. We now have a new covenant through Jesus and have a direct connection. Each one of us have a direct connection with God the Father through our Lord Jesus Christ. 
Amen. Mm. Yes. Great. Amen. Yes. Yeah, we can enter into his presence mm. with the sons of God. Mm. Mm. Very good. Mm. Amen. Uh, Tom, would you like to come in with a comment, please? Yeah, whenever, whenever I read that, I always remember this from this verse, and it's something that really spoke to me. And, I, and so I, whenever I hear this spoken, I get the same phrase coming in my mind, and it's this, that the war is over. Yeah. And um, I'm so thankful that, that we don't have to be in that place now where we are at war with God and God's at war with us. And have we done this enough? And do we need to do that enough? Jesus made the playing field level and said the war is over. Having been justified by faith, we've got peace with God. The war's over. You know, the ceasefire's been called. And so it takes all the effort out. Now we just have to appropriate faith and grace, really. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Thanks, Tom. And Craddock, would you like to come in with a comment, please? Yes. Um, I was thinking what Gloria was saying. And what you were saying earlier on about the Old Testament saints had to look forward to the cross. And after the cross, we look back to the cross. And I think the reason for that was that when Lucifer fell, the original sin of his pride contaminated. It happened in heaven. And his original sin contaminated the temple because he he presided in the temple over the worship and uh, and that and his sin had contaminated the temple and therefore the old testament saints couldn't get in there until it was cleansed mm -hmm. and it couldn't be cleansed until jesus took his blood up to heaven and spread it on the mercy seat and in the temple mm. and cleanse the temple and then Jesus opened the door and like like Darren said the the veil was rent mm. and access was made for people to then be taken from paradise into mm. heaven but the the thing about faith is we we tend to mix it up and I, I'd been reading somebody who mentioned the fact that when we see the flesh written in the Bible, it's basically saying the five senses. And we have, in the past before we got saved, we got all our information from the world via our five senses. And faith is like a sixth sense, mm. which when you're unsaved, sixth sense, the sixth sense, which is faith, is in the spirit. And access is bad to the natural man because he cannot perceive the things, the natural man cannot perceive the things of the spirit. Mm -hmm. And we still can't perceive that through our five senses. Yeah. It, it takes the gift we've been given of faith mm. to understand it and to operate in it. And, and you said that the grace was God's part, but the, the faith we have that was measured out to us, that's our part. And if we just hear it only and sit on the fence and don't put, put it into action, then uh, it's virtually of no effect. Because like you say, it was mixed with faith. And you can't sit on the fence and be active. You can't do either. You've got to actively take heaven by force. You know, uh, Jesus said that uh, the kingdom of heaven is taken by force. And you can't passively be in faith. Faith's got to be working. Mm. And um, that's my two penny. I don't know where anybody agrees, but that's the way I see it. <laughs> On to you, Heather, for a comment, please. Well, I was just looking at, um, you know, how it says, therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through whom? And that, those two words are, are important to me because 
you know, there are two kingdoms, the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness. And there's only one way to get into the kingdom of, of light, the kingdom that belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's through him. And um, he's, he's um, in John 10, 7 and 9, it says, Jesus said, verily, I say to you, I am the door. He's the door. He's the way you get in. He's the way you go through. He's the door. And he also said, I'm the, the way, the truth, and the life. There is no other way to get to heaven or to become part of the kingdom of God except through the Lord Jesus Christ. And the yeah. access that we have is through faith. And that's yeah. just simply trusting God, believing him, and trusting him. Yes. And, and, and it's very simple. A child can do it. Yeah. You know, very, very simple. <laughs> It's interesting the the simplicity of it because you know that verse that we quoted before that Gloria read before you know the gospel was preached to us and to them it's the same gospel um, Darren would see this all the time the same message is preached to um, a group of people and some decide to accept it and some decide to reject it now. Mm. What is the process for that decision? Well, it's as simple as I'm going to sit in the red chair or I'm going to sit in the green chair. That's all it is. It's only a decision. It's not mm -hmm. like one person has more than the other person. It's, mm -hmm. not, like, it's not based on earthly wisdom. It's mm -hmm. a switch. You choose to accept the gospel or you choose to reject it. It's as like Jesus said, it is the simple as it is stepping, it, You have to take the step of faith to actually step over and and believe, and that's that's your act of faith. Yeah. It's like I'm choosing but to believe. I, I'm thinking. I, I'm seeing it as that the faith only kicks in once the decision is made. It's a Will I sit in the red chair or will I sit in the green chair? Um, I've haven't got, I haven't got a third chair. Oh, I'm going to sit in the green chair. Boom. Uh, you know, other people might not see it this way. I'm only expressing the way I see it because I've I've thought about it quite a bit. You know, how does how is it that you know I I was a pretty knockabout sort of a young fella, and most of my mates. Um, who also heard the gospel said no, and yet I said yes. And, you know, was I smarter? Well, you know, I just said yes. You know, I, 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 yeah, so it's as simple as that. I can't put, all I can, all I can see is it's a decision. And the, yep. Christian, the Christian walk, see, I, I don't believe that it's our mighty faith. I think the focus, there's so much focus on faith, you know, great faith and this level of faith and that level of faith. Well, we've all got the faith of Christ on the inside of it. We've just got to tap into it by deciding to accept what the word says and to go with it. Um, mm -hmm. Can over to Nikitas for a comment, please. Yes, thank you. Oh, so many thoughts I have now. Uh, I was thought, yeah. I was talking to a brother uh, earlier this day, and uh, he was telling me that, uh, you know, one, uh, the verse that says nobody can come to the Father than uh, when God uh, pulled him. I don't know the verse. In yeah, English. yeah, yeah. Well, he was trying to say that God will do things uh, without the, the, the choice of the man. And I, I wanted to, to help him to say that that's not true. So yeah. you explained that we have a choice. Yeah. I was, always, I was uh, also thinking about uh, Thomas. When the second time, when the, uh, the first time when Jesus appeared, we know he wasn't there. And he said, uh, if I don't put my, my hand uh, in, in his hand and my, in his, uh, uh, in English, how do you say that here in this? In his side. Mm. In the side, I will not believe. He made a choice mm. to not believe. Yes. So it's, it's, God can do things, but we have to co cooperate with with, with, mm. uh, with His laws of His of His word. That's mm. what what our part is. 
Yeah. Second thing I want to say that uh, what Tom was saying, I uh, I read a, a little story. I, I I would like to explain uh, about that the war is over, and uh, after the second uh, world, uh, world war in 1944, there was an island in, 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 the, in Japan, in, uh, in Japan, where there were soldiers. But because of the bombing, they couldn't hear their hair was, uh, was uh, damaged. And uh, they didn't hear the, the plane that was uh, saying that the war is over. After the war, years after, they were hiding in the jungle. And they still didn't uh, know that the war is over. And that's mm. a picture of many Christians today. Mm. Uh, yesterday I was talking uh, on the radio station explaining the difference between the old covenant and the new covenant. So many brothers and sisters, beloved brothers and sisters, think that God's still mad at them when they make a mistake. Mm. And I was trying to explain that God is not mad at you, mm. even when you make a mistake. So uh, I read the story of Japan, I read it uh, a few times and it was so what Tom was saying, the war is over. God is not mad at us. Mm. And when, when we get a revelation of, of, of the love, of the unconditional love from God for us, our relationship with God changes. Mm. Changes very much. And then mm. we, we still learn more each day, but mm. so necessary. And, and mm. I have so much passion to help other brothers and sisters to what I received after 27 years being a religious person. Now for seven years I'm growing and, and that new revelation and uh, what, uh, the, the, the verses that help me is uh, Romans 12, 1 and 2, that we, we have to renew our mind. God, God, it's, uh, it's not God who renews our mind, it's our decisions that mm. can uh, change our view, our world view, our view uh, from God and our view to other people in, uh, mm. in our society. Yeah. So. Mm. That's really good, Nikitas. You brought out some really good yeah. points there. And I just wanted to say too, I really uh, agree with with you all and with Heather, um, especially about you know, to you need to be that you, you need to have that childlike faith. I had someone yeah. in my family actually say to me, "If I could prove to you that God's not real, would you believe me?" I said, "I said to him." It's, no, I would still believe that God is real because this is this believing in God is not and believing in Jesus is not. You don't have to have that evidence there. You don't have to see mm. Him. I know in my heart He is real. I know He's changed my life. You know this. This is something that goes beyond having evidence for like you. Someone was saying about you know Thomas it's, wanted to put his hand in Jesus' side. Yeah, it's yeah. like. It's like the word of the word of God is spiritually discerned. Mm. The word of God is spiritually discerned. You know, it, to, to, to have somebody read the Bible that's not saved, that's not born again, that hasn't made Jesus their Lord and Savior, it's just gooby gook to them, it, it, because it's spiritually discerned. And you know, um, I I've thought about what. What is, you know, what is it? Like, how do we know that we're saved? That's basically what Gloria was saying. How do we know that we're saved? And, and I got to tell the people in the third dimension that when the first time somebody used the word saved with me, I had already been a Christian for, I don't know, probably 30 years. And I still didn't know what the word saved meant. You go, well, how could that possibly be? Well, I wasn't discipled. I wasn't taught anything. So I got, I got born again when I was about 10 years of age, but it wasn't till I was 43 that somebody started discipling me. And he, that man said to me, he said, Gary, are you saved? I didn't even know what saved meant. Saved means, have you invited Jesus into your heart and given him lordship over your life. You see, Jesus is the savior of the entire world. You don't make him your savior. You make him your Lord. You Amen. say, not my will, but your will be done in my life, Lord Jesus. I make you my Lord and you're my savior in Jesus' name. Amen. So, but still then, 
if you're tracking along and you say to yourself, yeah, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian. How do you know you're a Christian? Now, this is a fair income question. How do you know that you're a Christian? Well, the Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit witnesses with our spirit that we are a child of God. If you haven't got that inner witness of the Holy Spirit, that's what Gloria was talking about. Mm -hmm. You can't have, you can't tangibly prove whether somebody's born again or whether they're not born again. It is spiritually discerned. It's a witness on the inside of you from the Holy Spirit. If you haven't got that, you need to get born again. Amen. That's true. John might have a comment. Yeah, John, do you want to jump in? No, I, I agree with uh, what's been said. And, and to back up what Heather is saying, it, it, it's simply trusting, believing. And uh, really, uh, that, means, uh, that means faith in the Greek, if you look all those words up. You know, it, the scripture says, uh, as in Habakkuk, uh, uh, you know, uh, the just shall live by faith, right? And we walk by faith and not by sight. So, it's been real simple to me that uh, where it also says that, you know, we're following hard after God and it's, it's that, it, and it all has to do with our faith. And I, I simply believe like, like Quebec said, he wants, he wants to make our feet like Heinz feet, like the deer's feet. Well, I, I've asked him to make our faith like Heinz feet, because if we walk by faith, Mm -hmm. uh, we need sometimes to watch where we put our feet. Yeah. And um, so, I mean, I think that's very important. Now, there's sometimes we're led in the valley of the shadow of death. You know, we're just following the best we can to keep Jesus in front of us. And, and I've experienced that, and that's been my experience with faith to this point. So, mm -hmm. Heather, you're right on, lady. I, can I just add to that? I was last week i was at school and i was talking to the children you know i i, I teach pre-primary up to year threes for, for bible do bible with them and uh, i had all these children sitting around and i'm talking to them and i'm talking about how there is two kingdoms you know and there's a king and and jesus talked about the kingdom of god everywhere he went he, he spoke about the kingdom and so i i said you know there's a kingdom of darkness and and the enemy is the devil and he's got people bound up in that kingdom but the moment people give their lives to the lord jesus christ they step over into another kingdom they give their allegiance to another king and we talked about what a kingdom was you know but when i'm when i mentioned i said you know to step over you just have to invite jesus to be your lord and savior to be your new king your new master and, and that way you're rejecting the old you're you're coming in and giving your allegiance to a new king, you know? And immediately I looked around and all these little faces, they got their eyes all closed and their mouths moving. And they were inviting Jesus to come and live in, to be their king, to be their Lord and master. And, and it was just so exciting. And I had not even told them to do it. They were just doing it because they wanted to have Jesus as their, as their king, as their new Lord and master. And, and they wanted to get out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. So, you know, that's how simple it is. A little child can do it. Amen. A little child just sitting there and they were just, you could see their little mouths moving and their eyes were closed and they're saying, Jesus, come and be my Lord and Master. And that's mm. how simple it is. Mm. That's how it's simple. It's simple. Yep. 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 Amen. I mean, I think I think Tom was reading ahead. He's he's already quoted from verse two. First <laughs> <laughs> <Close> tonight. <laughs> verse two says, "By whom also we have access by faith into this grace, wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God." And my notes there, and I'll read my notes myself because I've only got short note this time. <laughs> Our decision is to believe. Then the faith, faith of Christ kicks in. Therefore, we have access to God's grace through the faith of Christ. Concerning access, note in this verse how Paul knits 
by whom with by faith this is further confirmation that it is the faith of christ rather than our great faith so let's have a look at that by whom and by faith by whom also we have access by faith into this grace and you know that's the way i see it hey if you don't see it that way we can still be friends <laughs> <laughs> You want to jump in there, Tom? That was your verse, wasn't it? <laughs> no, the only thing, to keep things simple, salvation is all about just two, two, two parts, really. I, I tell people to try and keep it as simple as we can. The first part is the gospel has to be preached. Mm -hmm. And then the second part is there has to be this, this drawing of the Holy Spirit. And that's what Heather was talking about with these children. The two mm -hmm. parts of it the gospel was preached and the drawing was evidence and that's that's mm -hmm. and some people don't recognize the being drawn and reject that other people do recognize the being drawn and accept that and so mm -hmm. we just got to keep preaching good news and mm -hmm. god does the drawing his holy spirit does the drawing mm -hmm. and he does it mm -hmm. at, at his perfect time as well it's not not maybe when we want it to happen but it's in his perfect time and so we've just got to keep Keep preaching some good news keep out preaching, there and let the Holy Spirit do the drawing. Yep. Amen. Amen. Credit, could you come in with a comment there? Yes, the, you know, like you say, the, the witness of the Spirit. And it, it's the Holy Spirit's job to, to do the drawing. It's not, it's not our job. But, you know, evangelism most of the time tries to take over that situation. You know, it, it doesn't say go into the world and uh what, what how how is it but it says uh go into the world it doesn't say go into the world and do witnessing it says go into the world and be witnesses mm. and it's the the life that we live speaks louder than you know sometimes these people can see a double standard and are not interested in the double standard they need to see the difference Christ has made in our lives mm. to, to uh, appreciate it. You know, that's, uh, that's like something they can see. But, you know, Jesus never told us to do witnessing. He told us to go in the world, take the gospel, yes, but he told us to be witnesses. And this is where discipleship comes in, is being taught to be witnesses and to live the life through surrender to him that does make the difference. Amen, amen. Yeah, that's good. Thanks, Craddock. Uh, Darren, can you jump in with a comment there, please? Yeah, you know, I totally agree with that. Um, we are, you know, when we become believers and we believe on Jesus <clears throat> and start to grow in our faith and our belief, uh, I love Matthew 28, 19, uh, go ye therefore and teach all nations. And the Amplified says, go then and make disciples of all the nations and so um of course salvation is the first step and to come into that personal relationship with the lord but then after that you need to be able to grow in that relationship mm -hmm. and that's why i love being being part of this mm -hmm. is because that's what this is about not just the salvation aspect but the discipleship the growing in that relationship with the community of other believers where mm -hmm. we can bounce things off each other and, and um, you know, uh, 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 reference different verses and, and things like that. I believe uh, Nikitas mentioned earlier that, the, you know, the war is over and, and uh, God is not angry anymore. And I love uh, one of my favorite teachers said, not only is he not angry, he's not even in a bad mood. Bad mood. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I, love, I, I just love the fact that we can come boldly to the throne and just realize that when Jesus said it is finished, um, that meant all of our sins. That meant past, present, and future sin. So we can, we can live a life free of guilt and condemnation and shame because we can just cast all of our cares onto Jesus. And it's not about a standard of living and trying to measure up. It's more to focus on him and we're righteous because of Jesus. And mm -hmm. we're, we're righteous not because we do right. We're righteous because of what he has done. 
Amen. 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 Yes. Um, Nikitas, would you like to come in with a comment there? Yes. Thank you, Darren. Uh, you know, one of my teachers is Andrew Womack. He, he wrote a book. And on that book, on, on, the, on the first page, it's a, it's a dog chasing his tail. So uh, what is he trying to do? He, he's trying to get something what it's already got. And mm. uh, the, the verses that we talked about today, that are my favorite verses in Romans 5, 1 and 2. So we appropriate through faith what we've already got by grace. Mm. So mm. That's, that's very powerful. Because uh, in my earlier uh, life as Christian, I was asking God to do, to heal or to do something, to bless me. But mm. we are already blessed. Yes. Ephesians 1 and verse 3, we are already blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Mm. It's already done. It's a done deal. I don't have to, uh, to be frustrated uh, like I was before uh, in my earlier life. It's already done, but I have to believe and appropriate was already given by grace. Mm. So that's where many Christians uh, go. I think that's the problem in the church. Mm. They, they, they do so many things that, that is appropriate for the old covenant, but not for the new mm. covenant. I, I did that thing, sir. Eh? Mm. What I'm saying now and what I'm preaching against now, I did those things, all those things. And the, We've all been there, yeah. Nikitas. We've, We've all been there, I think. Yeah. It's yeah, great to have uh, revelations with other people. They, um, somebody said, this is not an original. I've claimed it, though. It's now mine. Every, every saint's got a past and every sinner's got a future. Mm -hmm. um, before I go to you, Heather, I just want to tell you that I was one of those children in your class. And if you're wondering what I'm talking about, you might have had a class of 10 or 20 children. I was in a mm -hmm. class of 10 or 20 children when I was about 10 years of age and I got born again. Mm -hmm. uh, but I didn't get discipled until I was 43. I'm just mm -hmm. lifting up those little children to the yeah. Lord right now. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. My heart, Thank you. My heart for those children mm -hmm. is yeah. to yeah. Thank somebody you, disciple them. Yes. I haven't yeah. got the answers. Somebody will Heather, disciple those Heather, little yeah. children, but yes. they won't be 43 years of age, mm -hmm. having been attacked by the enemy and not yeah. have thank any you, means Lord. to defend themselves because they don't know who yeah. they are in Christ. I thank yeah. you, Jesus, yes. that you send good laborers yeah. across, across their path yeah. and yeah. those good laborers yeah. will yeah. disciple yeah. every single one of those children who yeah. received yeah. you as Lord. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. 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 One Amen. of those, one of those little ones went home, and uh, actually, his mum rang the school as soon as she got home, and she said, um, and and she's Catholic, uh, Catholic, goes, you know, she's Catholic, and um, anyway, she was so excited. She rang up to say that she was so happy her little boy was learning about God at school. And she said, on the way home, he just wanted, he just was full of what he'd been learning. And we happened to be talking about heaven on that particular day. And, and he was talking and talking and talking and telling her all about heaven. And, you know, and then he goes at the end of it, but mum, you know, you're not going to go there if you don't have Jesus in your heart. <laughs> He's an evangelist. <laughs> okay, you can be in Darren's team. <laughs> about it that she actually rang the school straight away and she said i am so happy that my children are learning about god yeah. but that yeah they're, they're evangelists they've got it they they very simple you know they just believe step through the door yeah. i believe you jesus mm. you know i'm making you my lord and savior yes. they step over and and away they go they want to tell everybody about the lord you know it's so good I, I've got the best job and I get paid to do oh, it. Oh, you so. have. You have got the <laughs> best job teaching Bible to the best. Oh, it's I don't the best. Want to come in with a comment yeah, there. I, I, uh, I have a member of my family who have relatives in America. And they live in Arizona. 
and having been to Arizona, I sort of associated myself with them, like because I, I went to the near where they where they lived, and they're cat lovers and children lovers, and they posted something up on Facebook that said there's a special place in hell for people who have hurt children and who have hurt animals. And it was their particular belief that um, there are depths in hell for the quality, if you can understand what I'm saying, or the, or the depravity of the sin that they have committed. There's nobody in hell because of the sin that they've committed. Their sins have all been placed on Jesus. And she's still got this belief as a Christian that there's people in hell because of the sin they've committed. And the only people that are in hell are the people who've rejected Jesus because the sin question has been, mm -hmm. has been sorted. It's all been placed on Jesus. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yes, there, there's only one sin that we're held accountable for, and that sin is. Um, can you find this the verse for me, please, um, Gloria? <coughs> um, it it says. Um, uh, just let me have a think. Um, it's yeah. There's there's one single sin that we're held accountable for, and I'm trying to think of the verse. The verse says that. Um, because they believe not on me. If you just do a search mm -hmm. for those words, because they believe not on me. Right? This is Jesus talking about, he says, when he is, you know, if I, if I be raised up from the earth, that's when he was raised up on the cross. Um, just, yeah, just. John 16, 9. Yeah, I'll get it up here. Um, okay. John, John 16, 9. Okay. Yeah, that's the one. Mm -hmm. Okay. I um, I nevertheless, I tell you the truth. This is, um, this is in John 16, reading from verse 7. seven. Um, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. So this is Jesus speaking. For if I go not away... The Comforter, that's the Holy Spirit, will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin. The New King James says he will convict the world of sin. Notice it's the world he's convicting, not born-again Christians. So this is talking about the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit is come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment well what is this sin well it goes on to tell us in verse 9 it says of sin singular because they believe not on me so it specifies which sin we're held accounted for and that sin is not believing on jesus amen. that's the only sin that we're held accountable for amen 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 Amen. 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 And we have reached the hour. So um, I think Tom and Wendy are the only ones that are due to. Can I get and you? John. To, oh, and John too. Yeah. Like to. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. You're good. Okay. Um, Tom and Wendy, would you like to make a comment? Yeah, I was just. Um, from like Ephesians, no one. Um, I think people know that grace is a gift from God, but um, Ephesians 2 verse 8, but it was good that you mentioned you know, that faith is a gift as well. And um, you explained it well, you know, that faith is just uh, making a decision step by step. I think a lot of people get anxious, don't they? And they're trying to muster up faith when we've already got it. So I, I think that was helpful to me. So hopefully it'll be helpful you know, to other people who are listening as well. And such good news that uh, we've been given the gift of grace and the gift of faith as well through through Jesus. Yeah. You see, there is, I believe that there's our faith. You know, this is kind of up for, up. you know, it's up for discussion. It's not like, oh, because 
Gary believes this way, that you guys have got to believe this way. I'm just expressing the way I see it. You're given this gift of faith at the new birth, but you don't get it until you've made that decision to accept the gospel of Jesus Christ that's being preached to you. So at that stage, you haven't got the gift of faith. The gift of faith kicks in when the decision is made. So if you can follow that logic, and if you are in agreement with me, and you don't have to be, but if you are, then I put it to you that that's the entire walk, that we make the decision, and then that faith kicks in. That's what I said before. Now, it, the decision is not, it's got nothing to do with your great faith because, or it's not got nothing to do with your intellect, your wisdom. It's got nothing to do with something that God has given you because that would be God showing partiality towards a man. And he shows partiality towards no man. The word says that many times in the Bible. So, um, yeah, I'm just putting it out there because this is a Bible study and we can discuss things, these things. Mm. We can agree to disagree on certain things. There are, there are foundational things that we can't disagree on because they are absolutes. You know, they're life and death stuff. They're, and, and, you know, if you want to know, well, what, what are those things to do with the Trinity? You know, that's something that's not up for discussion that can be explained, but it can't be debated. Um, and at this point, I think I'll ask Gloria to close with prayer, please. Mm, so, yeah, it's been really interesting having you all here and making all these different uh, comments. And, and uh, I'm sure those people who are in the third dimension have um, benefited from hearing the word. Well, if you have, just yeah. jump down below and put in a comment because we, we, we are coming to a close right now. Um, and you know the drill. Uh, hit the subscribe button, the little bell, yep. and follow us on on the Facebook page. And back to you, Gloria. Yeah. So, Father God, thank you that you have been um, uh, so gracious to us. Now, thank you. Thank you for the brothers and sisters here that have been discussing your word. Thank you for all of those who have uh, joined us online and those who will watch again in the future. We thank you that we are already blessed that we are already healed, that we are already saved. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you've mm. done for us. And Lord, I just declare uh, bountiful blessings to just come into the lives of, of those people who are seeking to know you more. I reach mm. out to those people who are hungering for, for you and Lord, that you will have people here that will be those witnesses to them, that will bring them the good news that will bring them the precious word of Jesus. And I bless you all and praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, Amen. from Western Australia, bye everybody. Bye. On bye. See you this time. Bye. 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 Bye.